Good morning. Weren't paying attention, it's afternoon. <laughs> My speech isn't that long, it's just the font is that big. And uh, unlike Marie, I have been of that age. <laughs> Today is a moment of celebration for, first of all, the newest inductees, as well as the shoulders upon which we all stand. And this will probably, you are witnessing history, the last time you will ever see four policy debate coaches on the stage at the same time. <laughs> and it's not because of Marie's presentation. <laughs> I've had more than a quarter century to prepare for this speech. And while looking for a captivating introduction, a quaint axiom came to mind. The student has surpassed the master. So I went in search of the origin of the phrase, and I found several plausible roots. First, of course, you'll know that tvtropes.com <laughs> says there often comes a time when the student surpasses the mentor in ability. And it is at this point that the student reaches his full measure and becomes a master of his trade. This may result in the mentor becoming obsolete. If the student is arrogant, when he proves he is superior, he often utters a stock phrase or some variation thereof from the trope, the student has surpassed the teacher. Now, if the mentor is the nice type, he will often be highly proud of the student, though perhaps with a bit of ego stroking about his own teaching skills. And I'm quite sure there are no egos in this room this week. <laughs> Others state that the fact, if not the phrase, obviously goes back to the ancient Greek philosophers where Socrates, the master of his student Plato, in turn teaching Aristotle. But possibly the simplest answer is, we are what they grow beyond. That is the true burden of all masters. And that is from Yoda to Luke Skywalker. <laughs> I've acquired so many reasons to be proud of Jason, beginning in his grade school days of success at Academic Challenge. And yes, I have the photo to prove it. Which probably foreshadowed his success at policy debate at St. Ignatius. Jason worked throughout his high school and college years learning how hard restaurant work is, but it fueled his passion for cooking. He completed competed with other Ignatius alumni at Case Western Reserve University in its first go at policy debate. And yet Jason still managed to coach his and St. Ignatius's first policy debate state championship team. For which, by the way, the school got a free day. So thank you, Jason. <laughs> and of course, there were several more to come thanks to his energy, his intellect, and his generosity of time and talent. For more than a decade, Jason hosted and taught a summer policy debate camp open to students from all schools, novice and advanced, who could not attend the bigger and more expensive college-run programs. Many of those young men and women are now the coaches that we see working to secure another generation of debate flourish. Jason has always shown the signs he is a true man for others. As for his character, according to Charles Spurgeon, a British clergyman, a good character is the best tombstone. Those who loved you and who were helped by you will remember you when the ferment get me nots have withered. Carve your name on hearts, not on marble. Now, anyone that works with uh, in people in the advancement or nonprofit know that individuals are very quick to give to brick and mortar projects with naming rights before contributing to the soft projects such as scholarship and professional development. However, if you look at the comments from some of Jason's students, you see where the impact of education shines the brightest. And without hyperbole, I quote from the definitive source of academic evaluative parametric. Rate my teacher. <laughs> Quote, 
Mr. Habig is literally the nicest man ever. He is an amazing director of the debate program, and he truly cares about each of his students. He knows everything about everything, and is very nice and approachable. His dedication to the success of his debaters and his commitment to helping them is outstanding. Another states, literally, hands down, one of the best teachers I have ever had. He's a tough grader, but if you ask questions and you show your thought process, he'll actually give you lots of points back, even if you got it wrong. <laughs> He is an amazing teacher. He's very friendly and fun, and you actually learn stuff. Basically, basically, the best teacher on planet Earth. <laughs> and year after year, since Jason was a freshman in high school, I attempted to remind him of the blue and gold that runs through his veins, but sadly, in 2005, I lost the battle, and Hathaway Brown gained a stellar educator and advisor. It's not just because he too is a graduate of the University of Akron with a Master of Arts, but because of what he brings to the classroom. Quoting from Hathaway Brown, Jason loves teaching because he focuses not on the final product, but also on improving the process through which each student learns. For Jason, the love of knowledge is not a 10-month sprint, but a lifelong journey. When asked in an interview in March 2017 Cleveland Magazine, what are the benefits of staying intellectually active during the summer, Jason's answer was simple. Summer gives the students the opportunity to dig deeper into topics that they're passionate, but also to improve the skills for next school year. We have time to reflect and improve. During the pace of the school year, you don't have that luxury. We find that students take risks in the summer. It's safer to fail. You don't feel the consequences. You are building a toolbox to go into the next year to say, OK, I can handle these. I have all the resources available. But more importantly, as a loving individual, I'm not sure how many cherished life events, cherished life events there are that a person shares with other members of our human family. But to quote Menachem Begin, peace is the beauty of life. It's sunshine, the smile of a child, the love of a mother, the joy of a father, the togetherness of a family. I've been blessed thanks to Jason and his wonderful wife, Jenny. I was a reader at their wedding, allergic to the birth of their first son, Calvin, and in the photo of his next son, Nate, I have the umbilical cord showing that's how quickly I got the message. My wife, Joanne, and I have been blessed to share birthdays and simple dinners that make such a priceless impact on us watching the boys grow up. And by the way, Jason, eight more years. <laughs> but in the area of social justice, according to Robert Kennedy, each man stands up for an ideal, or acts to improve the lot of others, or strikes out against injustice. He sends forth a tiny ripple of hope and crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current that can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. If you know Jason, you know his passion about social issues that affect the human condition, whether the issues are wages or working conditions, poverty, geopolitical strife, climate change, or simply how we treat our neighbors. He's constantly keeping himself aware, trying to get the word out to others. This can include get out the vote canvassing, phone calls, attending town hall meetings, and I'm quite sure that politicians have his phone number blocked. <laughs>
Jason invested and committed his life to helping others, much like his involvement with the Urban Debate League in its many forms and iterations. For several years, he's been working with the John Carroll University and other uh, individuals, such as fellow alumni with Charles Bentley. And of course, former debate partners that we really never lose, as well as our speech companions. So in the Cleveland Scene Magazine interview with Vince Gregoric, one of Jason's former partners, the symmetry between inner city life and debate is astonishing. Kids have to learn how to operate within the rules of society and school, all while not losing who and what they represent. Teaching youth to properly research, articulate a point, is a skill that they carry beyond the podium and into the real world. I regret that I now begin to bring to a close the summation of the early life and contributions of an intellectually competent and open to growth, a loving, religious, socially just young man. Jason is a loving husband, a caring father, a dedicated son, and a supportive brother. In 2014, receiving the Silver Award for Excellence in District Leadership. Nominated in 2017 for the United States Presidential Scholars Program for Distinguished Teachers. Who is currently the chair of the Middle School Department of History, the director of Hathaway Brown Summer Program, where he also holds the Ann Corlett Ford Chair in History and today is inducted into the Ohio Speech and Debate Association's Coaches Hall of Fame. Jason has truly learned to live his life, as quoted by George Sand. Guard well within yourself that treasure, kindness. Know how to give without hesitation, how to lose without regret, how to acquire without meanness. In Jason's own words from an interview about speech and debate helping girls discover and use their voices in 2016, I know how important this activity was to my own intellectual development, and I want to give that same experience to others. It is a great way for students to develop skills. To me, the biggest benefits of speech and debate are those less obvious. Speech and debate teaches the students to organize, to be better listeners, and more concise. And so, in closing, on behalf of all the young men and women whose lives you transformed, the adults you impacted, and specifically enriching my own life, I want to say thanks to you for your generosity of intellect, friendship, and kindness. And to quote, one more time, Leonardo da Vinci. Tears come from the heart and not from the brain. Congratulations, Jason. Thank you so much. Um, it is truly an honor to be inducted into the Ohio Speech and Debate Hall of Fame. Uh, and it's an especial, especially proud honor because of the high regard I have for all the great coaches uh, here in Ohio, the ones on stage, the ones in the audience, the ones down the hall coaching and judging policy debate right now. Um, it, it's truly a special group of people and I'm really honored uh, to be a part of it. The accomplishments I've achieved during my coaching career have only been possible because of so many people around me who supported me every step of the way. Thank you to my awesome assistant coach, Carrie Kofer, who picks up my slack uh, and helps make the program here at HP better every single day. Thank you to Joe Bazzelli, not only for his gracious induction speech, but most importantly for getting me involved in this activity. Uh, unlike Alan, I did not go to high school in the 90s, in the 80s. I did go to high school in the 90s. Um, and it's amazing how chance interactions can change our lives forever. Uh, Pizzelli's general invitation to try debate as an extracurricular after being in his oral interp class as a freshman was one of the most formative events of my life. Um, to the coaches of the Cleveland District, thank you for the collegial atmosphere and professional development that uh, you provide to me and to all of the students in our district every, uh, every day, every tournament, every year. A 19-year-old version of me did not think very highly of my district. I thought the National Circuit was the place to be, and I'm 
I've admitted for a long time, but I will definitely admit today that I was very, very wrong about all that. The coaches of Cleveland truly care for their students and are motivated to do the work necessary to help each child succeed. It is truly an honor to call each and every one of you my friends and colleagues. To Alan and Dolores, it's a gift to share this, day, this stage and this day with you today. Your service to the OSDA and your careers are a blueprint for a next generation of coaches as to what excellence looks like. Uh, to my high school friend, Michelle, uh, who made the trip out here today from Cleveland on a snow day, I, I point out, uh, she came to support me and to support our team. I give her my heartfelt thank you for her unfailing support and for the autonomy she gives me as an educator. Uh, it is truly a rare privilege to work in a school where the only question that anyone ever asks me about speech and debate is how can I help. Uh, it is a supportive environment and has really helped me grow uh, as a person and an educator. To the men of St. Ignatius High School and the women of Hathaway Brown, for whom I've had the good fortune to coach, thank you for the time we've spent learning together. It is, I am continually awed by your many talents and the way that you share those talents with the world around you. You made every moment of coaching a true pleasure. A special thank you to my current team for making a truly phenomenal video tribute for me last night where they contacted alums that I've coached and haven't seen in a really long time. Uh, it was a special moment uh, and I'm truly grateful. The hard reality of coaching, speech and debate, is that the time I spend at tournaments comes at the expense of time with my family. For 18 of my years coaching, my wife Virginia has often borne the brunt of weekends alone and extra chores endured while covering up for things that I should have been doing at home. As someone who strives to be a feminist, I'm both troubled by the sacrifices she had to make for me to advance my career, but also profoundly grateful for her continued and unwavering support. Although she's never seen a round of speech and debate, uh, <laughs> maybe that's a good thing for her, uh, this honor has been as much a recognition of the sacrifices that she's made uh, and continues to make as much as it is of my accomplishments. It was always hard to leave Ginny when I would go off to tournaments on weekends. Uh, it's been especially hard in the last six years uh, because our lives have been blessed with my two sons, Calvin and Nate. Uh, Cal and Nate, I hope that someday you both find mentors who are willing to make the sacrifices to help you uh, in the way that I've tried to be there for my students. Uh, no matter what accomplishments I have in my life, being your dad will always be my most proud title. Uh, and I'm truly blessed for that. In my, house, in my house, the hardest thing about not being home on Saturdays during the bay season is missing out on time reading with my sons. Uh, it's quite a competition to see who's, who gets to pick the books that we read, uh, and this is a competition that I almost always lose. Uh, while Nate prefers modern classics like something by Greg Pizzoli, I don't know how up you all are on children's literature, but he's one you should check into. Uh, Calvin often chooses something from the Berenstain Bears or Mo Willems. Uh, when it's my turn to pick the book, I always pick the same title and everybody groans. And Calvin's down here in the front row and he probably knows what I'm gonna be talking about here in a second. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with the book Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. That's not my favorite book. Uh, <laughs> but I, I much prefer another Maurice Sendak book that's a little less famous. Uh, it's called Pierre. Initially I couldn't place why I was so drawn to this book. Uh, it's a story about a stubborn young boy who will only answer every question, I don't care. Uh, spoiler alert for those that don't know it, after being left alone by his frustrated parents who don't know what to do with him, Pierre's eaten by a lion, only to be saved by a doctor who hits the lion with a folding chair. Uh, it takes this near-death experience to help Pierre learn the error of his ways, and the story ends with the simple statement, the moral of Pierre is care. In life, there are workhorses and show horses. I try every day to be a workhorse and to make caring for my students the moral center of my job. While I work hardest for my own students at Hathaway Brown, coaching in this community means caring about the well-being of everybody, not just my students from my school. My upbringing played a huge role in helping me to shape this worldview. Both my parents were public school teachers and gave freely of their time to the benefit of the students who, uh, from their school district. My alma mater, St. Ignatius, is guided by the motto meant for others which oriented me during my formative years towards a life of service. One of the factors that attracted me to starting a debate program at Hathaway Brown was the school's motto, we learn not for school, but for life. To me, learning for school is self-focused learning, seeking the most efficient way to move from one 
subject or education level to the next. On the other hand, learning from life is learning the skills you need to transform the world into what you want it to be. In short, I'm drawn to be around people that care more about others than they care about themselves, and I've been blessed to find these opportunities through speech and debate. In my mind, this activity is the most impressive pedagogical technique that I've ever found for helping students to learn to listen, to take notes, to research, and to think critically. Today, as our nation recognizes National Speech and Debate Education Day, we should celebrate the amazing talents that training in speech and debate can harness. My friend and colleague, Amy Rodiger from Mentor High School, often uses the phrase, skills not scores, to help us stay focused here in Ohio on what really matters. But I'm here to tell you today that without caring about others, without empathy, without a desire, should have stapled the pages. That's a <laughs> speech, speech rule I never learned. To make change, all of your skills you master in this activity will fail to reach their full potential. I know that there are students who participate in speech and debate simply as a way to build a resume, using this activity as a means to an end, whether that end is college admission or a prestigious career. I'm not here today to knock going to a top university or having a successful profession that earns you a comfortable living, but if this is the only factor motivating you to participate in this activity, you are doing it all wrong. In the last two weeks, our nation has been captivated by the students from Stoneman Douglas High School, the scene of a horrific school shooting. These students have mesmerized our media, with many pundits asking, how can it be possible that students are so articulate, so quick on their feet, so well-versed in the complex issues of policy? I'd humbly suggest that they stop by one of our tur tournaments each weekend, for if they did, they'd see a generation of students ready to take the world by force. at Stoneman Douglas High School just four days before the school was turned into a crime scene, the media would have seen many of the same students now famous from TV competing in the area's NSDA qualifying tournament. If the reporters are still around in June, and I hope they are, they will see these students and thousands more like them competing at our national tournament in Fort Lauderdale. Robert Runsey, the superintendent of Broward uh, County Schools, where Stoneman Douglas is located, credits the district speech and debate program, which is one of the largest in the country, as a key factor in preparing students to take on their whole high profile advocacy roles. Whether you agree with the change or uh, they hope to make or not, these Stoneman Douglas students illustrate the power that each and every one of you possesses. When you combine your speech and debate talents with caring deeply about the people and the world around you, it's essential that you hear this message early and often. Every single one of the adults who helps run this activity in Ohio, from the most accomplished coach to the most inexperienced novice judge, comes to the tournaments on Saturdays because they believe in your power to make the future better. Please use that power to choose to care about the world around you. One of the most important New Testament parables commands us not to put our lamp under a bushel, but instead to let it shine before all. Don't hog your many talents and use them just to benefit yourself. Instead, care enough about others to put them to good use, fighting to make a better and more inclusive society for all those that come after you. As you prepare for competition this weekend, in what for many of you is a capstone to a successful season, or possibly even a successful career of competition, please consider prioritizing gratitude for the well-being of this activity, at least as much as you care about your own personal success this weekend. I'd like to think that our league starts this tournament with this opening ceremony to help ground us about what really matters and not just to subject you to lengthy speeches by people you've never met. <laughs> what really matters this weekend is the long-term success of each and every one of you, not just those who end the weekend victorious and grace the stage tomorrow night. Winning can be fun, but in a world where we often are too focused on ourselves, winning can lead to the mentality that Pierre has in the Sendak book mentality that makes life centered around your own accomplishments and allows you to say I don't care to everything else. This weekend, care for each other and treat your opponents with the respect they deserve. Avoid saying I don't care when confronted with the reality that even after 90 years in Ohio, our event still has a significant gender bias problem as a quick glance at last year's Circle of Champions in Cleveland or the HB Speech Debate Twitter feed would demonstrate.
here, you can't say I don't care when acknowledging that in my home district, the Cleveland district, and likely yours as well, we can easily fill buses of students each Saturday from private schools like mine or wealthy Ivoring suburbs. Yet we can't get schools in the urban core of our cities in Ohio to compete at even a fraction of that level. We also can't say I don't care. We also can't say I don't care when recognizing that the entire southeast quadrant of our state, which includes all of Appalachia, lacks even one speech and debate program for the students in those high schools who would so greatly benefit from it. Others before you have cared enough about our community that they've worked tirelessly to make the space into what you enjoy today. Give up your time and talents to help it thrive in the future. For only through the hard work of all of you will our league be able to celebrate another 90 years of educating the best and brightest Ohio has to offer. Whether you finish this weekend in last place or win the whole damn thing, we are proud of what you have built this season together. Now more than ever, our state and our democracy need you to care enough about the people around you and the world around you to put your speech and debate talents to use for those who haven't had the privilege of the educational opportunities that we all too often take for granted. If you commit to caring about others and using your voice to advocate for the world you want to see, your generation will succeed where others before you have failed. In the end, someday when you reflect on a white life well lived, the moments that really matter to you will be the ones that you share in reflection with the people you love. I hope that someday, in a quiet moment like that, when you have the pleasure to read a book to a child of your own, you'll look back on your time in forensics and think about how this community helped shape you into the competent and compassionate person that you have become. For only in that moment can the speech and debate coaches of the state of Ohio consider our work a success. Thank you.